The Owasso Animal Shelter in Owasso, Oklahoma, receives hundreds of unwanted pets every year, but none like the nine-month-old puppy Alicia Shelton was about to be given. It was an early March day, and a young man came in and brought a puppy that he'd found on his way to work. And, uh, the young man couldn't keep the puppy himself, but he made a special request. He asked that if we were unable to place the animal to give him a call back before we euthanized. And your number on the Alicia took his number, knowing that placing the dog in a home would be difficult at best. For us to place every animal that there is extra, each person in the United States would have to have 10 animals. Alicia knew in her heart that it would only be a matter of time before she would be forced to put the puppy to sleep. There's so much stress and so much emotional turmoil that goes on with people who have to euthanize animals. And there's nothing you can do that makes you feel good about it. A month passed, and finally, the young pup's time ran out. One morning we came to work and we were overloaded with animals. We have 14 pens and we had about 18 animals. The dogs that have been there the longest go first. In a last ditch effort to save its life, Alicia called the man who'd brought the dog in. She left several messages, but no one called back. By mid-afternoon, there could be no more delays. We call to let them know, I'm sorry, we can't wait any longer, and we have to go through with the procedure. The procedure used at Owasso Animal Control was a lethal injection of Fetal Plus, a fast-acting and deadly poison. When we give the injection right uh, into the abdominal cavity, the puppy gets really sleepy and he lays down and he falls asleep and then they go unconscious and that's the end of it. As the puppy lay dying, the telephone rang. It was the family uh, that had dropped him off and they were very upset that we euthanized him and they cl claimed that if they would have taken him had we given them enough time to, to call back and that they were very much in distress about it. It really hurt my heart when I thought I had killed a dog that would have been adopted had I waited five minutes. Out of frustration and guilt, Alicia attempted something she'd never done before. She contacted a local veterinarian, hoping against hope that he could help her bring the puppy back to life. Yes, Dr. Burnett, please. It's an emergency. Dr. Todd Burnett took the call. It's not something that routinely comes up, and, and I certainly hadn't heard of anything like a euthanasia being reversed. So I told her that, that uh, by the time she reached the veterinary hospital, more than likely, he would have died. So we took him into the uh, city truck, and uh, by the time we made it outside, he was unconscious. Alicia and Charles rushed the dying puppy to the veterinary clinic. About halfway there, I started thinking, ooh, this may be the wrong decision. I don't think he's going to make it. By the time they arrived, Almost 15 minutes had passed. What's wrong with the dog? This is the dog we just euthanized. Okay. He's well, going back to surgery. Dr. Burnett's already back there waiting. Think okay. When they first walked in the door, I just assumed that he would be dead. Upon closer inspection, it was amazing that he still had a, a heartbeat and he still had some shallow respirations. Most dogs that are administered a euthanasia solution with a fatal dose typically don't live beyond two to three minutes. How long ago did you give it? 20 minutes ago. What did you give? Four cc's of Fatal Plus. And I need to get started on some oxygen. We just started a supportive and symptomatic treatment course, put a catheter in the leg so we could administer fluids and injections. Since we did have a heartbeat and some respirations, we can give drugs to help stimulate those and just try and establish some more healthy body signs. Against all odds, Dr. Burnett fought for hours to keep the puppy alive, but the young dog remained in a deep coma. The possible outcomes from that point is that he metabolizes the drug and eventually recovers, or he doesn't. Alicia, we've done all we can do. I think everybody was trying to prepare themselves that it may be futile and he wasn't going to make it. While Alicia Shelton and the staff at the veterinary clinic waited for a sign of life from the puppy they were fighting to save, another heartbreaking story was taking place 40 miles away. A family was about to lose their beloved pet. 
Chris and Catherine Coggin live in Oilton, Oklahoma, with their three daughters, Jessica, Andrea, and Elsa. But it was their dog, Draco, that played a special part in their lives. Whenever I had to be in shape for basketball, I'd let him out on the leash, and he'd jog with me around. And uh, he'd come to my room sometimes and lay on the bed with me whenever i do homework and stuff. It was, he was a special dog. I liked it when he sniffed me, and he played with me. And I liked it when I hooked him and got me dirty and I had to change my clothes all the time. Sadly, a tragic accident was about to take their beloved Draco's life. On Ash Wednesday, he was hit by a car. We liked to walk him in the evenings, and sometimes we'd walk him on the leash, and sometimes he just liked to run in. The car didn't see him. I went outside for a long time, listened to all the dogs bark. As one dog died, another miraculously came back to life. Hey, sweetie, are you awake? How are you doing? Oh, hey, sweet boy. When the veterinarian told us that he was playing in his pen, I assumed that he really can't, really can't be playing in his pen. He's probably just sitting there looking happy. So when we went to go pick him up and he was actually running around, and playing, and really playing, with an IV in his arm and everything, that was very exciting. With a heart full of joy, Alicia contacted the man who'd brought the puppy yes, in. Calling from the but in another wrenching twist of fate, he was no longer interested in adopting the dog. I was kind of flabbergasted and insulted that he was good enough for him when he was dead, but he wasn't good enough for him when he was alive. Hi. Now even more determined than ever to find the puppy a home, they turned to the local press. And I kept thinking, I know that there was a guy in the Bible that Jesus brought back to life. What was his name? And I couldn't think of it, and I couldn't think of it. And then it dawned on me, it was Lazarus. And the animal control officer said, yeah, that's great, let's name him that. And so we did, and it fit him perfect. A few days later, Chris Coggan opened the paper, not suspecting what he was about to discover. Saturday morning, I was home that weekend, and I was sitting in my chair reading the paper, and I noticed on the front of the page was a small dog that was very similar to Draco. And I, I hollered at Catherine. I said, Catherine, you need to look at this. Here, look at that picture. Everyone agreed. Lazarus bore a striking resemblance to Draco. Wow. That looks like Draco. It looks like Draco, doesn't it? I was amazed about his story and how much he looked like Draco. It was, I was just blown away. Well, we thought, well, maybe we should try to adopt him. We read the story. They were going to take applications for adoption of him. And the girls and I were kind of excited. We thought, well, maybe we should try to do that. Immediately, she picked up the phone and called and was given an answering machine uh, message. And she left the message saying she wanted to adopt the dog. Hi, my name is Katherine Coggan, and we live in Oilton. We had received over 55 messages on our answering machine by the Monday following the article. With so many people interested in the dog, Catherine knew that the chances of adopting Lazarus were slim. And so when she sat down to compose her thoughts, she wrote simply and from the heart. Dear Lazarus, what a great name. God surely has a plan for you. I hope that it includes us. We have three girls who would love to have you for a brother. We have plenty of love and care for you. Do you think you would like us? We hope and pray so. God bless you wherever you go. Love, Catherine, Chris, Jessica, Andrea, and Elsa. <laughs> well, sounds, good. sounds very sincere to me. <sighs> well, you know, this is probably working. You're going to have to go in. A few days later, they received the phone call they'd been praying well, for. That was Charles, and he said, Well, Catherine, we've chosen you for the family for Lazarus. And I was like, oh, Girls, listen. <laughs> girls! What? Guess what? Mom started screaming and jumping through the house and stuff. And I went in there, like, and she was just screaming. It was hysterical and stuff. Hi, 
you today? Hi, Alicia. I'm Catherine Coggin. Oh, the next day, the Coggin nice family you. arrived at the shelter to meet Lazarus for the first time. Thanks. They were just tickled to death. My littlest Elsa, she just had fun. He's about her size, so she liked that he was on her, her level. He jumped on me a lot, and he said, hello. Then I said, my name is Elsa. He said, that's a nice name. With Alicia's blessing, the Coggin family brought Lazarus home with them to begin their new life together. But he just, I think, was maybe thankful after being near death to, to have a home to go home to. So um, he just, he was just fine. He just loved it. I think we all like him a lot. He's very special, like Draco. It was very odd that our Draco had passed away the same night Lazarus came back to life. On Ash Wednesday at that, I thought that was a miracle. I really did. I thought it was a miracle that he was brought back to life. One died, one was brought back to life. Maybe so. I think that might have been meant to be. There could be no more delays. We called to let them know, I'm sorry, we can't wait any longer, and we have to go through with the procedure. The procedure used at Owasso Animal Control was a lethal injection of Fetal Plus, a fast-acting and deadly poison. Every animal that there is extra, each person in the United States would have to have 10 animals. Alicia knew in her heart that it would only be a matter of time before she would be forced to put the puppy to sleep. There's so much stress and so much emotional turmoil that goes on with people who have to euthanize animals and there's nothing you can do that makes you feel good about it. A month passed and finally the young pup's time ran out. One morning we came to work and we were overloaded with animals. We had 14 pens and we had about 18 animals. The dogs that have been there the longest go first. In a last-ditch effort to save its life, Alicia called the man who'd brought the dog in. She left several messages, but no one called back. By mid-afternoon... And a young man came in and brought a puppy that he'd found on his way to work. The young man couldn't keep the puppy himself, but he made a special request. He asked that if we were unable to place the animal to give him a call back before we euthanized. Alicia took his number, knowing that placing the dog in a home would be difficult at best. For us to place... The Owasso Animal Shelter in Owasso, Oklahoma, receives hundreds of unwanted pets every year, but none like the nine-month-old puppy Alicia Shelton was about to be given. It was an early March 